So I'll explain what I'm doing. This is GitHub, which is a web interface to Git with additional features. And I'm gonna open a file called hello.tac. I'm able, so far, I, I've done nothing. You can do exactly the same as what I'm doing. Because I own this repository, I can click this button, edit this file, and now I can edit it. Pretend I've edited it. I'm going to cancel the changes, and I'm going to go to Actions. And one of the actions I've got is build the LaTeX document. And because I own the repository, this light blue screen that says that there's a workflow dispatch event trigger run workflow, I can press this button, which I will do. And we'll see what happens. I have to choose a branch called main. I run the workflow. And it says queued. It's waiting for something. It's in the queue, along with all the other GitHub users, waiting for a space on the virtual machines. And we've waited 18 seconds, and it's in progress. And we're now 25 seconds. And we can see what's happening. It's building Zhu Cheng's LaTeX Action version two, and it spent 35, 36 seconds on that already. Okay, we'll come back to this later because I want to go on to the next tab if I can do that. Uh, Okay, this is a similar repository. It was built in a bit of a different way, so it's organized in an uncomfortable way. But here's a file called story.tech, which readers of the tech book will be very familiar with. And again, because it's my repository, I can edit it if I want to. So I'm now in the editing mode, and I'm going to cancel the changes. And again, we're going to go to actions. And we go on to the tech action in the workflows. And it has a run workflow button that I can press because it's my repository. I choose a branch and I run the workflow. Nothing much happens because we're waiting to join the queue. So it's waiting. So what I'll do now is go back to the LaTeX one and see how that's doing. Very good. So it took one minute and 52 seconds to do this ac action from Zhu Cheng. Then it set up the Git repository one second. It took two seconds to compile the LaTeX document and no seconds to upload it and no seconds to finish up. And the building the repository sets up a Docker file and pulls tech live. So we're installing Tech Live, which takes nearly two minutes, just so we can typeset our little document, which took about one second. The, there it is, I missed it. This is the one I ran two minutes ago. It took 18 seconds. And, 
if we look at it, there's nothing that took more than a second checking out the code. There was no getting stuff from tech life. And here is a PDF file showing folder. Uh, that's probably the one. I mean, if that's the one, come on. And here's the file we just typed set. And there is our file type set. So what I've demonstrated here is that if you own a suitable GitHub repository, you can use it to typeset tech and LaTeX documents. And that sometimes it takes a long time and sometimes it's quite quick and it depends on just how you do it. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to get a suitable repository. I was able to use this one because I owned it, even though it's in the social tech organization. But there's a device on GitHub called Fork. Fork your own copy to your own account. So if I press Fork, and I've got a few places I can do it to, so we'll do it to there. So now we're getting a copy of, my, of that previous repository, but this time it's my own copy. And if you have an account on GitHub, ABC123, and you did the same thing, you get a repository in ABC123, and we're going to go to finish. I'm afraid the setup of everything's rather odd. And then we go to story.tech, and we're going to edit it for real this time. My name is Jonathan. Okay, so that tells them that I'm here. I'm going to commit the changes. So now I've used Git version control because I've saved a new version. I go to actions. I have to say that I understand my workflows, so I want them to be enabled. So I have to trust whoever created this repository, which was me. And now I can run the workflow. And it's been successfully requested. And in about 15 seconds, we'll have the thing typeset. Oh, it's finished. There we go. So that wasn't bad. And the PDF file exists as before. We better give you the proof ocular, as they say, let you see it. Ah, oh, here we go. It's hidden behind the fold. Artifacts. Showing folder. Sorry. It was there all the time. It's just that, um, and it's got, my name is Jonathan. So whilst I've still got everything up, is there any questions specifically about what we've seen? And if not, I'll stop screen sharing and we can have the discussion. So I think we're all right. So we've ended the demonstration now. And uh, Jonathan, could you do one thing? Yeah. Could you show us how you would now pull this back from GitHub onto your own desktop. 
so that oh, you, you recover the... files and have them under your control. Oh, you mean the PDF file? All of them? Oh, the, the project, essentially the, the tech file and any output files. Okay. Does it have a way of bundling up and presenting you with a zip or tar file? Yeah, let me first of all tell you about the PDF file, which is that when a workflow runs, you get artifacts such as logs and error files and so forth, that you're probably happy to be deleted if everything ran fine. Uh, and they're automatically deleted after a few months. But you can, if you want, have the artifacts committed to your Git repository. So when you press the workflow button, the PDF is added to your Git repository. And if you add it to a special Git repository, the PDF file gets published on your website as well. So that's the PDF file can be treated like any other file in your repository. Now, the next thing I want to show you is Here we go. Um, sorry. Where are we? Share. I'm having a little problem with. Here we go. So. Here's the Git repository we're working from. I'll go to the home page. And there's a code button that allows you to get the code through Git, or you can download everything as a zip file. So here I'm downloading everything as a zip file. So does that answer your question? You can get zip files out of it and you can clone it, which means you get an exact copy of whatever is in the repository. Yes, that does. Thank you. And I think it's a really important question. How do I, how do I escape from this attractive system so that I maintain my independence? Is there another question? <laughs> 